Hi guys, welcome back. This is episode number 47 of Matt Chat, covering one of the best computer role-playing adventure games ever made, Lorian Cole's Quest for Glory. For glory. Hell of a game, okay. Uh, this was uh, released in 1989. It was originally titled Hero's Quest, uh, but they, uh, Sierra got into a little trademark infringement type situation there, so they had to change it uh, to Quest for Glory. Uh, this was a series uh, that was, of course, uh, designed by Lori Ann Cole, and it's probably well known to you if you are a fan of the series, and uh, also with her husband, Corey Cole. Now, uh, Lori was a fan of fantasy role-playing games. Uh, she was a major a gamer, major player in this. And as a matter of fact, she met Corey, her husband, at a convention of uh, fantasy and, sci and science fiction. The two got together, somebody had a friend at Sierra, and uh, next thing you know, we get this uh, wonderful series. Um, now, you probably are familiar, I would hope, uh, with Sierra's uh, earlier adventure games. These things are legendary. I'm talking, of course, about games like King's Quest, um, Police Quest, Space Quest, uh, Leisure Suit Larry Quest, okay? <laughs> a very well-known and uh, beloved games in, in their own right. Uh, but Quest for Glory stands apart. Uh, basically what we have here is a hybrid. Uh, they've taken that engine uh, that was used for those other games I just mentioned and added on two elements. Uh, one being, of course, a role-playing engine. So you've got stats and some character classes and some skills that you have to grind, uh, level up and um, some arcade sequences. Uh, some, you know, in my opinion, uh, maybe a little simplistic, but still um, fun and it definitely <laughs> exciting. Uh, combat sequences, uh, they add a lot to the gameplay. This is, uh, compared to the other ones also, this is a very non-linear game. Uh, there's many ways to, to solve puzzles depending on your uh, character class and your skills. Uh, you know, when, and of course that dramatically increases the replay value as well as reduce uh, the frustration. You know, one of the things that has always plagued adventure games is that they, uh, and to make the game experience longer, they just, you know, ratchet up uh, the game's, uh, the puzzle's uh, difficulty. Really, they just, basically what they do is make the damn thing so obscure uh, that you either uh, have to cheat to find the answer or sit there, like, uh, incessantly trying every possibility. Uh, you know, I, I hate that about adventure games, and I try to avoid uh, games that will do that to you. A Quest for Glory, though, the, with this setup, um, you're able to approach puzzles in different ways and, you know, generally get through uh, the game that way. So it's a very nice feature, and I think that's one reason why so many uh, people still uh, love this series today. Anyway, there is a lot to talk about here with this, with this game. Uh, so without further ado, let's play Quest for Glory. Now, of course, the first thing you need to do is select a, a character class, and there's three basic choices, very uh, traditional, conventional, mage, fighter, or rogue. Uh, here you see the statistics, and there's quite a few things you could put points in. I was watching a video earlier, and a guy had worked out a little trick uh, so he could put points in all of those skills over there, like pick locks and stealth, and uh, create a super character, uh, but that's not really necessary. Uh, weapon use determines how well you're able to hit your enemy, and strength, of course, is your amount of damage. You know, this is pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, once you're in the town, you get this uh, very nice uh, opening scene with the sheriff. And one of the things you'll have to do right away is walk around, talk to people, figure out what's going on, um, eventually learning about all of these uh, calamities that have hit this town. Uh, the name of this town, by the way, is Spielberg. And if you look at the etymology of those words, you'll find that in German, Spiel, uh, among other things, means play. 
And of course, Berg means town. Uh, so in a way, this is sort of play town or game town. It's just an example of the cleverness of the dialogue and writing. Uh, these you know, graphics are, of course, are quite cartoony, but uh, still a step up from uh, the King's Quest and, and that line. I'll show you a VGA remake in a second where they have actually uh, really dramatically improved uh, the graphics here. But, you know, that's not really the uh, the important thing. If you like this game, it's because of the humor and the, and the characters and the fun dialogue and, and so on. That's really where the appeal of this series comes from. Now, the interface here is uh, pretty nice. Uh, basically, I can right-click on things to get a description. I left-click or use the arrow keys to move around. And then I have a text parser I can pull up to type in commands. You know, here's an example of one of the early puzzles. Uh, there's a bird in the tree there, and I probably need to get up there for some reason. You know, if you've played adventure games for a while, you know, this is uh, never just a coincidence. Uh, but there's different ways I can go about this. I can try to climb the tree, uh, but that's using a, a score. And since I've got zero climbing skill, I'm never going to be able to get up that tree. Um, I think a rogue might have uh, some climbing skill by default uh, that you can use. As long as you got one point in it, uh, you can uh, just keep doing some climbing to uh, raise the skill. Uh, but my, I believe that if you have zero, you'll never do it. Uh, fortunately, I do have some uh, throwing skills, so I can pick up some rocks and then start <laughs> throwing the rocks at the uh, creature. Uh, unfortunately, my skill is still very low, so I'll have to do this many, many times uh, before I'll be able to hit him. And then, of course, a mage has a spell called Fetch uh, that he can use uh, to you know, get the uh, nest that way. Uh, so there's many different ways uh, to go about these puzzles. You have to think about the type of character you've created and also whether your, your skill level is high enough. Uh, so very different um, than those other adventure games we showed earlier. I mean, personally, I think this was uh, a really great way to, to make an adventure game and I don't really know I don't I don't know too many other series that have taken their lead even today most adventure games are you know very linear with only one possible solution and a certain sequence that you have to go about uh, solving the puzzles uh, why more people didn't follow this example uh, I don't know let's skip ahead a bit to the battle sequences and, you know, basically what I'm doing here, I've got the arrow keys, I can dodge to the left or right, I can block with my shield, and I can thrust. Apparently, if you're good enough with this, you can get through these battles uh, pretty much unscathed. Uh, although you can also just keep thrusting away, and you'll probably kill your enemies. Afterwards, you can rest or go back to town or <laughs> run away from enemies. But still, it, uh, you know, it adds a nice bit of action, uh, keeps the game interesting, and <laughs> the blood flowing, as it were. Now here is the 1992 VGA remake, 256 color, and as you can see, the uh, the graphics are much much better. Uh, this is obviously the version I would play if you don't, uh, you don't have nostalgia for the the old graphics. Now, the combat sequences have been revamped a bit, as you can see. You can still use the uh, number pad, or you can uh, just click what you want to do with the mouse. Also, you know, if you notice, the uh, perspective has changed to allow a little bit better animation little more exciting uh, visual sequence. This version also changes some of the dialogue options, so instead of that wide open parser, you have keywords you can select uh, to ask people about certain things. And you know, that again simplifies the process quite a bit. Now there are five of these games in all. Uh, this is the first sequel, Trial by Fire, released just a year later. And as you can see, there's a, an Arabian theme to it, but What's neat is that you can import your character from the first game, and the storyline just continues all the way through. And here's a shot of the third game, Wages of War, which came out in uh, 1992. Uh, so they're pretty much releasing these uh, year after year. Uh, clearly, this one has an Egyptian theme, uh, which is pretty neat. Very different, different settings for each of these games. This is the fourth game, Shadows of Darkness. And this is the one Lorianne Cole likes the best. This is her personal favorite, uh, but it was widely criticized by the critics because it's just a lot of bugs. And, you know, I, I personally didn't like it. I couldn't even get past this first screen. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're supposed to do. It didn't sell very well at all. And that's why we didn't see the fifth game until 1998. Now, this game, Dragonfire. It updates a lot of the interface. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, gen the uh, general consensus seems to be it's a it's a good game, but perhaps not as uh, great as it could have been. 
That's all for this week's Matt Chat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got a great interview lining up for next week. I know you guys are going to like it, so stay tuned for that. I thought I would leave you with a quotation from a French tragedian, Pierre Cornelier. Where there is no peril in the fight, there is no glory in the victory. See you guys next week.